Okay, everybody, welcome back to New Life Garage. We're getting ready to do the teardown on the Commander. Uh, it's a 1000 cc V twin, uh, 2013 model uh, Can Am Commander. Uh, it's a uh, burning a little bit of oil. Uh, I think I know what the issue is, <laughs> pretty sure. I'm gonna flip the camera. I've got this set up so that it's just gonna video. Uh, what it's going to video and that's it. I'm not going to be moving the camera around. I tried to set up the best I can. Uh, I've taken some of the things off that take a lot of time. I've gotten most of my tools ready that I need. There will probably be something that I, that I forget that I'll need and probably won't be able to find it. We'll see. That's usually how my day goes. Um, but <clears throat> the motor for the most part is intact. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take the valve covers off. And then I'm going to rotate the motor to top dead center on number one cylinder. And then I got a tool to drop in through the uh, inspection hole there to hold that engine into that place. And then <clears throat> I'm gonna tear it down. So I'm gonna flip the camera now and we're gonna roll. All right. Right here, we have a cap that's plastic. You have to be careful with that. I've already broke one. It's too rough with it. So this allows us to get access to the crankcase, which allows us to turn the engine over, which allows us to get it to top dead center. No more center. I'll take that out. That fits inside this one. And then we're going to bring the back of the back real quick. number one cylinder valve cover off. Now I can rotate the motor and get it to the top dead center. I'm going to take this uh, sensor out so I can uh, see down inside this hole for when I got it on top dead center. inside this hole right here is I have uh, some numbers on the, we're going to call it the flywheel. It's like a magneto wheel. It's got a one and a two on it. So we need to have number one in the inspection hole. But we also have to have this cam where all the valves are closed. And that lets us know we're top dead center on cylinder one. So we're going to rotate this around. Got the number one cylinder at the top and the cam in the back. I've got a little tool to drop down. I'm just going to hold this in place. Make sure we have 
There. Now we got it in place and we're just kind of curious here. Alright, let's get this other valve cover off. Walk around the other side real quick. So, just as I suspected, uh, the cam is not centered where it's supposed to be. Not even close. So, this tool is an alignment tool for the cam. And I've got this top dead center. It's an alignment tool for that cam has got, you know, inch or so of play. But you got to have it centered. So, this tool allows you to center that. It's not centered. That's why this thing was out of time. That's why I was acting the thing. So, uh, if you're going to tear one of these things apart, go ahead and get you one of these because you're going to need it. Right here is just a fuel injector, I mean, you don't really have to do it this way. These, these little plastic connectors are pretty daggum fragile, and every time I've ever tried to take them apart at them connectors, they usually break. So I'd rather just pull the injector out itself. And I'll just put these screws back in here so I don't... I won't forget where they go, it's just easier to not misplace them if you... This makes it when you go back together with the lock or something. Makes the guess work out of it. Plug that injector. Don't give me a fuel injection off. That's how we're going to We're going to take this. This is going to be the intake. We're going to take that off next. I'm trying to go through this pretty quick.
intake does have one eyeball screw in it. I've got a whole new set of screws for the whole motor, so hopefully I'll have something that will work on this. It's not a star bit. All right, that's our intake. It's your number one cylinder and your number two cylinder. And the air comes in on mine up here, down through here. That's my snorkel kit. In through the mass airflow center into there and down into your cylinder where it splits up between one and two. So that's your intake. You gotta get this exhaust disconnected on this. Exhaust and stuff too, which is a bit of a pain, but on these side by sides with the motor being in between the seats, every ounce of heat that you can produce in them is a good thing. Old this before I got started. <laughs> anyway, you know, I, I've done a lot of motors in my life, but this is the first V twin or side by side motor I've ever done. Uh, so it, w it wasn't really a problem. Uh, I did it in my, in my backyard, um, it's the only place I had to work on my machine at the time. So, um, Took the motor apart in the backyard and I put it together in the backyard. And for the most part, it went pretty well. Um, except for a little bit of misinformation. So I, I haven't trusted this motor <clears throat> ever since it messed up the first time. And uh, one thing that you'll know about me is I don't trust people to work on my stuff. I did not originally have this motor rebuilt by the shop that rebuilt it, you know, the person I bought the side by side from. I had rebuilt at that shop. They charged him a lot of money. Like they charged him for basically a new engine, uh, but they didn't put a new engine in it. They just made it work again. Making it work again is one thing if you're doing it yourself, but when you pay someone, you know, five grand to do a rebuild, that's for kind of what you, what you expect. But that's why I do things myself because I don't ever want to be victim of that. If I rebuild it, and I don't, I don't do it right, just like this. I'm okay with that. It lasted me four or five years, and I learned a lot. And uh, each time I rebuild it, I guess I'll, I'll learn a lot more. And, uh, maybe in the process, some of you guys will learn.
one thing that mechanic can really teach you if you let it is patience. You will learn to be patient. Because if you don't, you'll go crazy. Because <laughs> these these things, man, they, they, they don't build them to to really be worked on like this. This motor, yeah, you can you can rebuild it in the machine, it's not a problem, but they don't do that from the fact that they build the motor, stick it in. They leave you the ability to pull it out. But I don't want to pull the whole motor just to do a top end on it. Uh, it's, a, it's a lot of work. You can, you can do a top end in the machine without too much trouble. Anyway, the exhaust I have wrapped it too, and it really needs to be redone. So while I have all this part, I may end up doing that. Yep, Brian, sorry buddy, but I'm in the middle of something. As a buddy of mine, Brian, I've called him a couple times a week and had her back. Hope I'm still connected to the audio. Video. Come on, man. There we go. Come on. Come on. My buddy Brian, he's down there getting, getting ready for deer season. He's back in his deer tent. And probably on his way back from there. He usually calls me. Alright, got that done. I'm gonna get these exhausts off here so I can pull these heads. I'll do a couple other things here. Like adjuster for our timing chain. These are uh, pretty simple, amazing, work amazingly well for something so simple. We're going to back this off a little bit. They are a little bit. Mm -hmm. This side's easy to get to, the one on the other side is not as easy. Basically, there's a gear drive.
there's a gear drive uh, down inside here and the spring when you put it in there right the spring puts a certain amount of tension on that and as you get slack in that chain it takes it up for you automatically if I remember right you gotta have a flathead screwdriver to undo that gives us the slack I need. If I remember right, that's a problem on the other side because you can't get this big screwdriver in there. ratchet that I'm using it's up it's not it's powerful enough to break those loose because I was a torque down but this is just a, a husky ratchet from Home Depot it's rechargeable it is it's not a powerhouse but you break everything loose uh, with a different wrench or, or with this and it speeds up you get the bolts out and it does pretty good for most things but it don't do good for everything but it's fifty dollars so you easily get your money's worth out of it if it just speeds up a couple of a couple projects you know one or two projects and it speeds it up it's worth it we go on this other side Remember that. And one being tough. It's like the toughest one. Mm -hmm. I 
goodness. Some of these bolts got to come out with the head. Because you don't have room to pull them out. And now I've got two little bitty screws in there and get out. I think they're eight millimeters, I remember that. Yep. And I've only got one because one's broken now. Supposed to be two of them in there. That's another thing I gotta fix on this one. Really good. Go back and get it better. Alright. Get this exhaust undone. Get this in here. Get this. Time to change gear off. This chain, you have to be careful with that. It's okay to let it lay on the side like this. When you pull the head off, you don't lay it on the side. If you ever rotate the motor without everything together, you want to take that timing gear and hang it from up here somewhere so that, that chain can rotate with the crank. If you don't do that, it'll rotate that chain down there and pull it off of the crank and it'll jam it up down there. And, and it's happened to me once because I had someone helping me and one of us was doing one thing and, and the other one wasn't ready. So I can't remember exactly what happened. Anyway, the chain got pulled down in there. And I did get it out and it wasn't easy, but I ended up doing it without pulling the motor apart. If I can get it off of this exhaust right here, you should. This boat's pulled up a little bit. Come on. <laughs> be nice to have some music on but you know what would happen if I turn music on they're going to delete my video <clears throat> so if I get bored enough I'll just start singing I'd be better anyway it's not really they probably still bang me. There's the head, and you can see how black that is inside there. Yeah, this one, this cylinder was definitely burning some oil. It may only be the cylinder, but I can see oil caked up on the piston. So absolutely. That is the number one head off. And then we've got, of course, the gaskets here. We're not going to be reusing those. Those are no good. And then this is the cylinder. So these kits come where you can just buy a new top end. It'll come with a new cylinder, a uh, new piston, new rings, new wrist pin, and new gaskets. Uh, and basically put that on top and you got a fresh motor on the top end. But like I said, as long as you keep your oil chains and stuff in these motors and take care of them, don't. You know, if you ever get water in them and you run them like that, you're going to tear them up no matter what. But if you keep the oil changed, which I change this every every ride, every weekend that we go on a ride, I put new oil in it. And the oil is still clean. So, and I do that for a reason, because I never want to destroy the bottom end on this thing. If you ever destroy the bottom end, it's got to come out. So, uh, in doing that, I feel like I'm giving the bottom end of my motor the best chance. And on these can Commanders, it's not that expensive to do an oil change. like 20 bucks. I mean, it's nothing. And it doesn't take any time whatsoever. So I'm gonna put my plug back in here for now. I don't want any dirt getting in there. Put that back in there. And let's see if we can get this right here pulled off. But I have any mishaps. That's your forward timing chain guide. 
This one right here is actually fastened underneath the head. If I remember right. Been a little bit since I took this apart. There's the cylinder. The piston looks pretty warm, to be honest with you, already. All right. Next. I'm gonna try to get that piston off of there. We'll probably end it with the disassembly today. And I may even end it after this first cylinder, I don't know. You guys let me know. I'm probably going to end it after this first one because this, I mean, it's going to take a little while. I don't know if anybody wants to sit there for two hours watch me tear thing. Now, but uh, let me know in the comments. If you would have, would have rather me leave the video going during the whole uh, disassembly, basically the second cylinder is going to be just a repeat of the first cylinder. So it's, it's not going to be anything new, but I'm going to go ahead and get this piston off of here. And... Uh, Trying to remember what type of a clip it's got on it because I don't remember. I think it's just a little C clip. Let me get my flashlight. What do I do with it? This maybe, I think that'll get it. And be careful not to drop this down into the motor. Matter of fact, let's just do this. Give myself a good chance here. You probably can't see that, but it's just a snap ring it goes in here. It doesn't require a snap ring pliers. I kind of wish it did, but it don't. It'd make it easier if it did, in my opinion. Uh, 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 uh. Anybody getting crazy here? Can you back up here? That's what holds that piston wrist pin in it. That's what that silver looking thing, I'll show you. And that keeps that, I'll show you what that does. So we get this up, we can push this out. See if I can break it free real quick. This wrist pin, if you can see, that's held in with that little clip. There's one on each side. And if you don't have that in there, well, this side actually has a lip on it. If you don't have that in there, what'll happen is a wrist pin will come out and it'll scar your cylinder bomb. So you're starting over anyway. So these ring gaps right here, that's what I want to check. I want to, I to, I'll take each one of these rings off. I'm going to put them in the cylinder and see if the ring gaps are still where they were when I put the engine together. If they are, I'll be surprised, but it's as simple as taking this off, 
like this. It just goes around like that. That's your top ring, your compression ring. Then you got this one, which is your scraper ring. I just broke it. Which is not really what I wanted to do. It doesn't matter, we're not reusing it, but I didn't want to break it because I wanted to test the tolerance on that. This was a cheap kit, very cheap. And this is your oil ring right here. And it's more than one piece, so it's got several pieces to it. You get your top and bottom ring of that. And you got this uh, center piece right here. And this third piece is a lot like a little spring. It's not a spring, but it's, you can see it's corrugated like that. All right, that is the disassemble of uh, cylinder one, and that's not normal. And that is not supposed to have all that carbon, and it's not supposed to be that black. So. Definitely this cylinder was having some issues. Part of this would be from the timing and the valves and all that stuff, running it like that for years, but part of that's from oil. So. I'm going to mic that cylinder out. <clears throat> I'm not I already know I'm not going to use it, so there's really no point. But other than just uh, my own personal knowledge, I'm going to flip the camera around. All right, let me get this out of the sunlight a little bit. All right, there we go. So it didn't take that long. Um, you know, if you got all the tools ready and everything's ready to go on these things, you can actually rebuild one in a day or even less. When we're talking about the top end, you know, we're not talking about a total engine rebuild. We're just talking about just the top end. Usually when you top, do the top end, you don't have to do the head. It's just a cylinder and pistons and rings. That's really all it is. Uh, if you got to have any machine work done to the head for the valves or anything like that, which I shouldn't because I put new valves in this one and everything looks like they're seating well. Anyway, I really think that's it. Uh, I'm not going. I'm going to cut the video off here. Uh, actually, 38 minutes. I mean, that's really not bad. Um, it would probably take me another maybe 20 minutes to to get that other head off. Maybe I got to undo the exhaust, which is just a couple springs, to get this second side off, probably uh, because that exhaust is up against her pretty tight. But, uh, you, know, you know, 20 minutes or so, I could probably get it down. Maybe 30, so it's not too bad, 39 minutes. Anyway, uh, if you got any questions or comments, uh, you know, feel free. Uh, I'm no expert. I've, I've had this motor part several times for various reasons. Uh, the first time was rebuild. second time was when I bent the valves. It wasn't my fault. I mean, it technically was my fault. I should have known uh, that they didn't get that done if they didn't get the motor done right so and it's, it's one of those things i had been wanting to check i just had no idea the, the timing chain looked so good and maybe they just changed the oil a lot but i mean the timing chain still had all the paint on it and everything so i really wasn't worried about it but i was uh i was very wrong <laughs> in thinking the time chain was good so i had to take the whole motor apart on both sides when i put the new timing chains in uh I had to buy a couple extra tools. No big deal. I still got them. But anyway, uh, I'm going to shut the video off. I hope y'all have a great day. Get out, get out and do something, man. And I tell you what, if you have an opportunity to be compassionate with someone, including myself, this is something I have to work on too. Is you know, you're driving on the interstate and somebody needs to get over, let off the gas instead of stepping on the gas. Uh, you know, we don't we don't have a lot of good drivers out there anymore. Everybody's trying to cut everybody off, and dark, everybody thinks they're expert NASCAR drivers. You know, they're not really trying to be mean. I don't think, even though I feel like sometimes they are, and I'm as guilty of it as anybody. So, um, we gotta start changing this world for the better, even if it's one person at a time. You look at the decay of society where we are, and. Uh, God, just since just since I was a kid, 
I mean, I'll, I'll just take our trips to the to the lake as an example. You know, normally when you get into a place in Arkansas and it's uh, at, a, at a lake or at an event, everybody's friendly there. And my experience at the lake this year, yeah, everybody out on the lake was friendly, but at the campsites, uh, people weren't unfriendly. They just were not friendly. You would say good morning to them or you would say hello, how are you doing, whatever, and they just wouldn't even respond to you. And so I don't know why society has gotten that way, but I, I don't like it. Uh, I'm a, a loving, caring person, um, and uh, I, you know, I don't know. I don't. I, life's too short to be unhappy. I promise you it is. Uh, and if you're my age, you got more of your life behind you than you got in front of you. Uh, I promise you, you do. You know, the odds are that we're not going. We're not going to double what we've already done. I'm 55, so. Odds are I'm not going to 110. I hope I don't anyway. Good Lord. But before I die, I hope that I can uh, teach somebody something. I hope I can learn something. I hope I can enjoy life. I hope I can encourage someone to enjoy their life. And and I hope that I can encourage someone to maybe go out and buy an old raggedy boat <laughs> that someone is trying to throw. A friend of mine bought one this summer. He paid almost nothing for it. He paid $900 for it. Uh, he got some friends together. They did a little bit of work on it. Um, it was running when he got it. It needed a few things. A uh, water pump they did on it just as a preventive maintenance kind of thing. But, uh, and he wasn't, you know, he's not really mechanic, mechanical. He's not, like, working on stuff all the time. He has rebuilt motors and stuff. But he bought an old boat for $900. Him and his whole family cleaned that boat up. And it looked good when they got done. It looked, still looks real good. And, uh... Got some friends over, and they, they put that new water pump in there and got it all back together. You know, cooked a little bit of food, drank a few beers, and he spent all, you know, uh, all summer on the lake with that boat that he paid $900 for. And he had, I don't even know, three or $400 tied up in it maybe. I don't know how much it was. We didn't really talk about the financial side of it, but he didn't have a lot tied up in it. He had a lot of time in it. But where can you go get something for $900 and use it for a whole summer? And, and he could sell it this uh, this winter if he wanted to and then upgrade it. I, I grew up with a guy. Uh, he lives local. He's a friend of mine. He's a great guy. When we were young, he did that every year. He'd buy a boat, and then he would upgrade a lot of things on it, get the interior redone. And I never really thanked him enough because I didn't realize how hard it was to do stuff on a boat like that. But he did it every year, and he took us all to the lake, and we all had a blast. We all had fun. And then he would sell the boat and then do it again the next year. Um, and uh, I'm assuming he enjoyed doing it. We enjoyed being on the boat. And if you listen, you know who you are. Uh, you know, we thank you for what you did. Uh, you know, a lot of people don't realize, you know, you always have friends that want to do something good for you, like, cook a big meal or you know I've got a friend he always wants to cook a lot of food for everybody he does that out of love and uh, because he loves his friends and he wants them to have good food and he loves to cook so um, you got to remember to thank those guys you got to remember to give them you know twenty dollars here and there you know thirty dollars forty dollars whatever because it's not their burden to do that and 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 uh but it is their passion, so you know, try to help them out, you know, and, uh, and remember to thank them, man, because that's the most important thing. Uh, they're doing it because they love you, and they want you to have something good to eat. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with that. Your friends that help you, you, you know, whatever. Uh, if none of you don't know how to do anything, get together and figure it out, man. You you can watch YouTube videos. You know, still go back to your manuals. Trust me on that one. Uh, but you can get an idea of this assembly of something by uh, watching a YouTube video. And one thing that I always do, if I got a, a part to put on that I've never put on, I get the part in first, and, and before I disassemble, I look at the part to see, you know, what holds it in place. How many bolts does it have? Uh, you know, is it got to be clocked a certain way? You know, I try to understand... It's called reverse engineering. Basically, you're looking at it off to see how to put it on so you know what to do to get the old one off. So always do that. You'll be surprised. you surprise yourself. Uh, some of you guys already know how to do all this stuff, and you think it's quite kindergarten, what I'm saying, and, and you're right. 
but everybody's got to start somewhere. I started when I was 12 years old. Uh, we were pulling motors out. I mean, I had a car before I was 14. Uh, we were pulling motors out and, you know, on oak trees and everything you can think of and putting cars on center blocks and crawling underneath there and pulling the transmissions out and, and laying them on our stomach and dragging, you know, dragging ourselves out in the gravel. That's just how I grew up. So um, for some people, it's kindergarten, and for some people, uh, maybe it's encouraging. So uh, anyway, I'm going to cut the video. Um, we're already at 46 minutes. So <laughs> if you watch through this whole video, I appreciate it. Uh, if you enjoyed it, like you know, like the video, please. Uh, comment, if you will. And uh, hopefully we can go do some good projects. Maybe, maybe everybody can comment, and we can you know get together and, and find some find some new project you know maybe something that's not too crazy i got a, a overland trailer that i want to do it's not an overland trailer but it's a trailer that i want to convert to an overland trailer uh something for really really small cars like my daughter's got a small uh, minivan with a trailer hitch on it and i would like to have that done uh, at a standard where she could hook up to her car and she can go uh camping with it and she can have, you know, generator and refrigerator and, and whatever that she needs, lights, everything, all that stuff, all in one little bit package that something really, really small could pull it. That's a cool project that I've had in my mind. I haven't uh, started budgeting for that because I already know the budget's going to be a little little bit crazy on that. Uh, I've got to find a, a, a bed-type uh, tent thing to go on top. Uh, and then, I mean, i got to find everything. I, I bought the trailer this past summer. I got a real good price on it and it's perfect for what i want to do it's perfect so maybe that's something we can get done i don't see us getting it done this winter the boat's gonna be a big project this is gonna be a big project and uh, but uh, you never know anyway i'm gonna let y'all go y'all have a good rest of your day and uh see you next time